Hey what's up guys, Sony have dropped the bomb for this era and it's sick in terms of design and the hardware of the console and the controller. Come on, let's have a look into it. So let's start off with the design. This new design of the console reminds me of an airport railway station from France. I think Sony might have taken inspiration from it. Anyways, moving on, we got the controller. The design of the controller is good and really, I like the white and the blue color scheme which is very clean and techy comparing to the previous one. And Sony calls this controller as DualSense and not Dual Shock because Sony previously used the different vibrating motor which rumbles and doesn't give much sense to it. While this DualSense uses haptic feedback technology which gives more tension and resistance to the button or the finger which is more natural and for the racing games like Gran Turismo this gives complete sensation and texture of the track you race and this gives complete immersive experience of driving. This haptic feedback is used previously from an iPhone 7 as it mimics the home button which is not present as a button. The triggers on the controller is changed as well which adapts to the game you play. Let's say you are shooting. The trigger adapts itself by limiting the halfway which gives a feel of a gun. And let's say you are racing. This again adapts by giving a feel of pushing a gas pedal on a car. This controller comes with the type C for charging, motion sensors and a built-in microphone and a speaker to speak with your mates on the game. And coming to the console, the console comes in two different variants. One is normal PS5 with disk drive and on the other hand is the digital edition which doesn't come with a disk drive. Both of them equips the same specifications. Speaking of specifications, we got AMD 8 Zen CPU cores which gives a major performance boost for games. And the graphic it's equipped is the AMD custom RDNA 2.0 graphics. This is a cutting edge stuff with the new architecture with the better clocking performance and comes with the ray tracing which most of the PS gamers were eagerly waiting for it. Here the specs might be the same as the Xbox but Sony had different approach for variable clock speed that Xbox doesn't have. Which means that PlayStation can throttle up and down whenever necessary while Xbox gives consistent clock speed. So you guys might ask what's the take in this? Well PS5 gives more detail and FPS while Xbox with a great consistent performance might give a better visual effects and overall this depends upon the developer of the game and what he tries to emphasize in the game. But the PS5 doesn't stop there. They have re-engineered the SSD architecture where they use their custom flash controller to solve most of the levels of the SSD goes through in terms of loading game data which in turn brings out more FPS to the game. And this PS5 comes with a 5.5 GB per second of storage bandwidth which means read and write speed and Xbox comes with 2.4 GB per second which enables both of the Xbox and PS5 to have the rapid switching between multiple games. So if you are playing a game you can pause it and jump to another game and you can come back and resume from the previous game you left without much of loading time and the PS5 also allows you to expand the storage using the standard PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD while the Xbox allows you to expand but you need to buy the extra storage only from the Xbox and you have a chance to upgrade outside the console using the adapter. So by now you guys could have figured it out which one to buy this holiday 2020. And that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching. Do leave a like, comment and I'll try to answer as much as possible and subscribe to have more videos like this.